This is the Seton Hall story, one that comes to life every day on our campus. This is the place where great minds discover, innovate, collaborate, and find their true calling. This is the place where passion has a purpose, where learning inspires leading. The bonds we make, the values we teach, inspire our community to take heart and take action. This is Seton Hall University. This is what great minds can do. Hello gamers, and we are back with EGFC, season number three, week number five. I'm Delamga, coming to you live with my incredible, lovely co-caster, Fan 9 s the one and only. We got Seton Hall University going up against St. Peter's. Yes, we do. And uh, I have not seen Seton Hall before, I believe. I have not seen... I don't know, I was going to make a dump on there. Anyway, we've seen St. Peter's like every week, though. And uh, the results have been fluctuating a little bit with them. I feel like they are still kind of still finding their way, trying to get their grasp on a, a big, crispy W right here. Forgot who they fought last week. It is escaping me, but I am checking as we speak right now. How did they yeah, do last week? It seems like the players are already confirmed. Game mm -hmm. one, we have Noah uh, going up against Sky, and I believe Sky is the Captain Falcon. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. They always start off with Sky every time. Sky is always the, the first one to go in. I don't know if that's oh. like a scheduling thing or they just do it to do it. But yeah, St. Peter's falling to Marist last week in a very, very close set. Uh, looking for a little bit of redemption uh, over here for themselves. I'm trying to see if Seton Hall did anything last week. Uh, they lost to Marqua Marquette University in a pretty big blowout. So these are two two schools who are wanting to find themselves back into the fold in some capacity right here. Lots to prove for both of these schools. But either way, we're going to be getting into it. We're going to be seeing Captain Falcon versus Bowser. This is going to be a really explosive matchup. It's going to be as simple as like whoever gets that first hit, whoever, you know, uh, doesn't overextend too much is going to be rewarded for it. Oh, yeah. Because as soon as Captain Falcon gets that down through a neutral or a side B, you can have so much damage potential. Yes, yeah, Sky already doing such a great job. Bowser, basically a combo playground for Captain Falcon. You know, if, if he is in the air, he's very easily juggled. Knee will connect fairly easily if the confirms are, are just right. And the recovery, if you can get your two frames in order or even get a nice dare off stage, should be good. Bowser, just gotta take those licks for a little bit. He also have some, has some pretty crazy explosive punish game as well. Sky controlling the stage right now. This is such a good place to be and tries to go for the falling there, but uh, Noah just safely rolls to get back onto the stage. Gotta go back Bowser's shield. He can't be too aggressive with it. And yeah, Noah kind of struggling a little bit here. We're seeing a lot of approaching falling aerials, but it looks like Sky has just kind of caught on to them. Still though, Noah's starting to find a little bit of momentum. Oh, that neutral B is going to be so much damage. They didn't hold on to it for any longer. Noah probably just wanting to go for like a 2 3 F tilt at that point. Oh, wow. Catching the jump and coming back on that stock. Noah. Wow. All right, though, Sky just needs to find this edge guard. A crazy overshoot with the falling knee to punish that right there. <laughs> Into the show you move. Whatever gets her done, I suppose. But I suppose. either way, Sky. Sometimes, like, you know, if you got a hammer and a nail, you can just use a regular hammer, or you can just take a, a nuke and just, you know, just drop it on top. I don't have that easy access to nukes. I don't know what you're talking about. Or a sledgehammer, perhaps. That's a little bit more realistic. <laughs> Either way, though, Noah have been fighting these execution punishes right here. Sky hasn't really been respecting Noah on shield as much, and being at a little bit of a deficit, it's up to Sky to really get these punishes going. Mm -hmm. He tries to go for maybe a bit of a jump leader. I don't really mind the commitment too much because Noah... That was good. I do mind, actually, the commitment because Noah did die for it. Oh, yes. Um, so you really got to be careful about over committing like that sometimes. All right, the big punish coming out here from Sky. And we get these nares. Tried to go for the up tilt. I don't think that would have even been close to killing just yet, but it would have gotten Noah off stage. And Noah just kind of respecting uh, Falcon's combo game, just holding out on all of these down throws right here. This guy really can't get a consistent follow up out of it. Um, but you can't be a little bit too greedy with your follow up. You gotta be 100% sure that it's going to connect. Um, otherwise, Bowser will just smash out of disadvantage like there's no tomorrow. Down early like that is such a huge commitment because now look, Sky's in disadvantage. One more hit will do it. 
This guy just trying to operate carefully around this danger zone Noah has presented him with. Still, these high recoveries, Sky has just been able to keep track and just keeps throwing Noah off stage. And I think that's the right thing to do against Bowser. Bowser is at his worst when he's trying to recover. His recovery really isn't the greatest. Uh, while it does have a nice little hitbox going upward, it is susceptible to losing the hitboxes that, that come out before it and that are pretty big. I love these knees that Sky sometimes goes up because it's always in the most inexplicable places that they actually <laughs> do end up connecting. Like a low percent. What is, why? Sky's been threatening these uh, down airs every single time but has really not been able to get any of the ones except for when Noah does overshoot the recovery a little bit. That was an excellent stage spike. I do not think Noah saw that coming whatsoever. I don't think anybody did. The last thing I would have expected would be for somebody to go for the stage spike. I would have just gone through something like a down tilt, you know? That was a sour spot there too, Dara. I guess there was just enough damage on Noah to where that did send into a stage spike right there. And if, for those of you who don't know, a stage spike does bring the bottom blast zone up a little bit higher as well. Oof. That was techable. But Noah just didn't see it coming. And see you later. <laughs> Tried doing side V all the way down there. <laughs> Might have just been a misinput and mashed up V, but either way, there was no way Bowser was coming back from that, especially without a double jump to the game. Uh, Sky did a good job of cleaning it up towards the end, but there were times when they got like a little bit too aggressive. Um, oh, yeah. And then Noah took advantage of it. That's a good lead for Sky right there, honestly. Two stock to start off with, not bad at all. You know, we've seen we've seen worse starts from Sky before. Or sorry, uh, not two stock, one stock right there. But either way, we've seen worse starts from Sky before, but this week they look to be very on point with what they're doing. I love how many options they're threatening as well. Bowser is not an easy character to slay a lot of the time. Not in the slightest. Uh, he's, he's big and, you know, heavy, so it takes a lot to actually get a proper KO. But the easiest thing that you can do is try to go for denials, try to go for edge guards. Um, because although he does live for a long time, his recovery is really linear and exploitable sometimes. Especially considering how Captain Falcon can just run out there and back him. Either way, though, I think the adjustments Noah needs to make are just watching out for their recoveries a lot of the time. They've been, they were really getting picked off on their recovery a bunch, either while missing stage spikes or just overshooting it a little bit. On stage as well, I feel like they have to play second beat a lot. There was a lot of unsafe options Sky was doing, like dash attack or very unsafe landings that I feel like Noah could have easily been catching onto and punishing. I feel like they were just putting themselves in the air a lot versus uh, Sky. Yes, yeah, so go to game two, uh, playing a little bit more grounded, I feel like is universal advice that can always be um, really, really applied. You gotta respect uh, Bowser's shield a little bit more. Um, but also, I feel like something that Sky could have done to optimize the play a little tiny bit, they never really tried to um, go through any down tilt two frames. Mm -hmm. Instead, just always opting to drop off and double jump back, which is fine when you're doing it with purpose. And I don't think um, they were always looking for something uh, when Sky did that, but maybe did it just to move a bit. Even down air two frames would work out better as well. I feel like they were going off stage a lot. You can just time your down air two frame, and it, it, it'll work because Falcon's down air is crazy. You now down tilt is good off of overshoots as well, and even you can even just counter edge guard with up B sometimes, depending on how mm -hmm. far out your opponent is. So there's a lot of things that uh, that's that Sky could be optimizing a little bit further, but they're doing well. They're really doing well so far, so it's good to see. Um, but yeah, we're going into game number two. It seems like we'll be going right back to Pokemon Stadium 2. Uh, I feel like, you know, this is a stage that still favors both of them equally. They're both kind of looking for some similar things. They can both make good use of the platforms. Um, let's just see who paces, uh, who paces the match better. Going right back to PS2, and why not? I guess Noah's feeling confident. You no, know, there was a last stock game last time around. I believe we're seeing color changes from both players as well, so it's, it's going to be interesting. Tries to go for yes. the jump lead with the down end, which I don't mind at all because he still was able to get back and still ledge trap in time. And that down end would have been able to cover the double jump, so that one had like intentionality. Is intentionality a word? Yes. Is it? a new word I've learned. Intentionality. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Either way, Sky doing pretty good so far. Noah though, not looking too shabby either. Both of these guys just trying to find their startups right here. Good falling there from Sky right there. 
Oh, oh yeah. And to just go for that bold finisher, but every time Sky wants it, they just never seem to be able to get it. And what a tomahawk side beat. Noah looked so menacing with how they just double jumped in. That was a big mix up uh, right there. A lot of Bowsers will either go for like a falling Nair, but falling to side B is also a really good option right there. Sky has to be careful of that. Definitely respect it, but also definitely be able to react if Bowser isn't throwing out a hitbox like down air or, or neutral air higher up in the air. Well, but Sky gonna be able to close up that stock 48% as soon as they get that down throw. That could be a neutral, but they didn't actually drift in with the Nev. So uh didn't connect it the first time around. A little Ooh, bit. Wow, that's clear. All right, Sky threading a lot. We do see that down tilt come out, but not high enough to get the down air. I think we could have actually been able to call that out. You, you have to edge guard reactionary. I know it's hard to do so on online because Wi-Fi is crazy and wacky, uh, but Falcon has the speed to really deploy himself in good situations. I mean, Sky you just have, have to the right idea. Correctly. They just uh, slightly dropped the execution. They yeah. just didn't jump a little bit too high enough. And you got to make oh. sure you know that situation up being right under the PS2. You got to up the away. Pineapples on the menu today, and that's going to be a big lead for Noah to establish right there. But again, the Sky Classic just knee out of nowhere. Noah not but, seeing it coming. Yeah, but Noah didn't like whip down smash in a really exploitable game, so you know, they're just good recognition from Sky. Sky not opting to do that up air high enough either to get it, but we do have the falling. That, that'll work at most percents, I feel like, against Bowser, especially just because Bowser's so big. He's so big, he's so heavy, he doesn't have a whole lot of really fast buttons, especially oh! in going all the way through those up oh, but you gotta be ready. You need to stop and be patient and be ready for the falling down of the Bowser, because that's always what they want, and what a punish! Wow. That didn't kill? Wow, Bowser heavy. Alright though, no tech zone out here for Noah, and Sky is gonna be taking that 2-0 over Noah, putting St. Peter's up by a humble four points. That was really well played. Uh, at the end there, um... Wow. That was Fine. wild. I can't believe that knee didn't kill, yo. Bowser's heavy as hell. Oof. Not a whole lot that you could have done there except just, you know. Press the R that. button. Yep. <laughs> Gotta make sure you have the timing on that. True. Tough stuff right there. Well fought by Noah. Uh, I feel like just couldn't find openings against against sky like not really polishing off any of their bnbs we saw that whiffed falling uh nair to bear there which i don't think would have even killed that was a goofy interaction right there huh that's not a trade that you see typically happen at all oh that was so tragic good on sky to make it back though that was insane up air into up b to confirm and then another up b these knees are insane but yeah, no, that, that, that knee, and then and then finally like finishing it off with the upbeat stage pack, that was a pretty funny interaction. But either way, that's gonna be Sky, uh, you know, taking it off with, you know, a nice little solid, respectable four point lead for St. Peter's University. While we wait for everybody else to confirm who they are going and which players we are sending in, we're gonna cut to a quick little break. We'll see you guys in a few minutes.
Oh. Hello gamers, and we are back with somewhere Seton Hall going up against St. Peter's University. We got Owzer, the one, the only, representing Seton going up against the Big Kill. Big Kill. The biggest of kills. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Kill going to be playing uh, Byleth. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we literally saw the button check, and I'm literally already forgotten who Owzer plays. Uh, but with a tag like Owzer. It's gotta be like Ryu or something. No. Nope. No. Just kidding. It's another Bowser. One, go. So we're going in with it. We got uh, we got Big Kill up against Bowser playing Bowser. And uh, yeah, two Bowsers. Why not? Bowser's a good character. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a little bit tough for Bowser just by, you know, principle of like Byleth has solid, Byleth can kind of keep him out, neutral is gonna be really, really big. But honestly, you don't have too much to fear if you're just kind of sitting in shield. Um, and as a result, wait a second. Yeah, no, it should be, it should be Bowser and Big Kill. Yeah. It's insane how the discourse on Byleth has changed, uh, within the last year or so, I would say. Like, people regarded her as maybe, like, not that great of a character, one of the more underwhelming DLC characters, but she really, in her kit, has everything she needs to deal with a good amount of the cast, barring, you know, certain characters that are just quite a bit faster than her, uh, quite a bit smaller than her, so... I don't know. This this, this could be pretty bad for Bowser. I've seen enough great Bowser play to know that this character can just make things happen within two to three interactions. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Byleth just, she is just able to even up damage so well. She's able to secure the kills as well. But Alzer going to be getting a really big forwarder, going to be going for the neutral B as a way to stuff out big kill. But I really like that bit of a hang there. You know what? Just waiting out all those multi hits. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, big hits from big kill right now. We just, we just have to see the stock close off. And it's uh, the win condition is a little bit more apparent, I'd say, for Owser than Big Kill, because with Byleth, you kind of have to get sort of a stray hit. Uh, some, yeah. Sometimes a smash attack, sometimes an arrow. It's, oh, it's always something that the player has to make happen, as but opposed if it's a to being attack, a smash attack, you gotta space those. You gotta be safe mm -hmm. with those. You can't just be hitting Bowser's shield from just that up close. And now look at Owser oh with a whole stock lead, not on track to lose it any time soon. Um, they are, I mean, they're chilling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, good bear out of shield right there from Owser. Owser looking, you know, very good, very reactive to a lot of the stuff that Big Kill has been going for. Big Kill kind of always gets stuck in their movement. I've, I've, we've, we've seen Big Kill for a few weeks now, and it's just a player who, who really takes their time when it comes to what button they want to press in a lot of scenarios. Mm -hmm. All going to be getting another side B out of shield. It is such a quick button after, you know, dropping your shield. It's only six frames until oh, yeah. you can get it. So, Bowser looking extremely confident, honestly, with how little damage he took that second stock. Will, will not be super guys if this is just three stock. Wow, big side B coming up from that Aaron bar right there. Not gonna get the kill out. Bowser with the near frame perfect air dodge right there to get out of that situation. This is looking scary oh, for Big Kill. Oh, 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 oh. I, thought, I thought the neutral B was gonna be able to come through in time, but then. Very, very fortunately for Alzu, they were able to get a couple of hits in. Only at 65%. Big Kill is at a huge deficit right now. They have a lot of damage to make up. It's also one thing is just like not going for these straight hits, but like knowing your startups. Like for Byleth, low percent startups are going to be down throw to forward air. That's always a good one. 
Uh, wow. Nair to dash attack is good in some instances, or Nair to up B, depending on what hits a uh, neutral you're getting. Byleth, definitely a very nuanced character, and you really have to know... Uh, but in, uh, you know, you have nowhere other to look than the best player in the world to, to figure out what to do in certain situations. So I, my recommendation for big kill is watch some Byleth VODs, you know, look, look to see what MK Leo does. Look to see what, uh, other notable Byleth players like Pelu Pelu do. Like, it was like a very notable instance where like yeah. big kill got a grab on Owser at low percent and then went through like F throw. Yeah. Instead of like a typical like down throw and super right. leader. Right, so you gotta make sure that you have your bread and butter so that you can... You gotta make sure you got your BNB so you can put on damage. Your BNBs are what are gonna set you up for success later on in the game. It is one of the first things you have to do after you've become acclimated with the movement in your character. Mm -hmm. Owser doing what he need. Owser doing what they need to do. Yep. Um, but yeah, they're gonna be moving on to game number two. Big Kill has a lot of adjustments that they need to make. They gotta make sure they're not fishing through smash attacks mm -hmm. as the exclusive way to get a kill. You gotta be getting uh, some two frames. You gotta be getting, um, you know, some up airs at some point. You gotta be setting up those juggle situations. It seems like they only went through grounded on stage kill options when in reality, Byleth has got a little bit more than that. You got those up beacon frames. You gotta go through them. It's true. So we are going to see what kind of adjustments and adaptations Big Kill is going to make within game two. I don't know, Owser just did what they had to do. You know, they were playing very accordingly, just kind of waiting for Big Kill to do something unsafe and then punishing. Punishing well. That's what you got to do. As Bowser, you got you to gotta punish reactively. Consistently. Don't drop nothing. Don't do um, it. So it seems like they're going to be banning Smashville and Lilat um, as Violet, which I agree. You know, uh, you got, you want space. You know, that's really the biggest thing. You want to make sure you're getting rid of all those super small stages. But against Bowser, an instant ban should be Yoshi's. There is no particular reason that you should be taking Bowser to Yoshi's Facts. unless you 100% know what you're doing. Which uh, is kind of scary. Unless you play like a character like Palutena. I mean, Bowser, command grab is really good. He can kill you super duper early. There's not a lot of stage he has to navigate there. Slants can sometimes mess them up a little bit, but also your whiff punishes can be kind of messed up a little bit as well. So just be careful. So it's like they're going to be banning Battlefield. So if I were Aozu, this would be like, oh, you know where we're going? Lilat. Yo, she's not. I know, I'm just kidding. Just messing with me. Just, just a little goof, just a little prank. A little teeny tiny bit. But we are hanging in there, guys. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us as well. If you guys have been enjoying the stream, make sure you follow our technical director at House of 3000. Does a lot for the New York scene and in for the Smash scene in general. Technical whiz as well. Coded this whole thing from the ground up. Um, Coded me in. I'm not even. I'm not even a real. Person. I'm not real. I'm an automation. I'm just an AI. Devin programmed me. Yeah. I'm I'm just a bunch of ones and zeros. If, no, but if somebody if somebody told me that I was an AI, it would make sense. I think, actually, it, it would all come together. Um, so they have still yet to pick which stage they're going to for um, for game number two. It ain't that great. Ain't that real sweet? Ain't that something to talk about? Something to discuss there? Why? How hard could you possibly be thinking about your counter pick? Pretty hard. It seems like Pretty they'll hard. be opting to go for the final. Destination. There we go. If you enjoy oh. our commentary as well, you can follow Doramgar at Doramgaria on Twitter and Twitch. She streams sometimes. On uh, occasion. I don't know where the YouTube content has been lately, but whatever, I guess. You can follow me at Fan9S on Twitter. I stream also sometimes. Don't know where the streams have been or the YouTube videos. I've been big slacking lately on that. Either way, though, we're going into it. Final destination, game number two. Uh, Owser versus Big Kill. Starting off with an up to go, up B into the back here. Those are exactly the things that we like talked about last time around. Like actually going through the, you know, the the low percent com combos that you need. Still though, that worked because it was Bowser, but on other characters, I believe it's up B side after that as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of combos do work on Bowser. Yeah, Bowser is really your playground for, for your combo game. Wow, oh, just a wow. down beat out of shield. Goodness. 
Honestly, I like the idea because um, had Big Kill spot dodge to held onto shield, it would have either shield broken or the down B still would have connected. Seen some taunts coming out from Owser too. This is going to be a big damage. 35 off of that flamethrower to boot. You do not want to get hit by the sweet spot of that thing. Oh my god. I just threw <laughs> oh, yeah, the death smash. Catching Big Kill, get preoccupied with the movement, almost SDing, but then luckily saving themselves with an upbeat back to the stage. Oh yeah. Yeah, Owser just staying grounded, just kind of waiting to see what Big Kill is going to throw out next. Getting a little disrespectful with it as well. Go for the additional mental warfare. Why not? You got your opponent down. Take him down further. Oh, Jessica flew down smash at the ledge, but uh, Big Kill going to be successfully rolling back on keeping themselves safe. Another day gets the neutral, but then once again, just backing off, Woo! finds the kill as they catch Aozu with a down in a really exploitable position. She's fibbing when she says that. She's, she yells, my battle ends here. But it doesn't. You still have a, a you still have another stock, Bio. It's not over. Stop being so dramatic. Oh, where was the side B? For big kill right there. That could have been some monumental damage to start off this stock right here. But we're going for up throws. Mm -hmm. But setting up a tech chase, Azu refusing to play into Big Kill's hand, just opting to jump on in instead. Gets a pretty good spacing of neutral B. And now, once again, Azu just huge, huge lead. Oof. And the lead is ever growing at this point. Owls are just playing so well reactively, trying to get a little cheeky with it right here. This is looking scary for Big Kill. Yeah, you just need an F tilt, you need a forward, you need a smash attack. Bowser definitely has no struggle to kill at all. Okay. It's just throwing out moves. We're, we're just swinging now. We're just swinging for the fences at this point. Just everything on the table, everything throwing on the wall, seeing what sticks at this point. As Aozu, you just need a side B, you need a forward, anything. Get her! Get her! Get him! No! Alright, they're just... <laughs> yeah. Tough guy, baby, GG's. Shake my that's hand. A, that's, that's a tough guy right there. Can we... I want to see the, the grab box on that, just so I can laugh. There was definitely some hurt box extension shenanigans there. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, Sakurai. Very cool. Excellent. Wow. That was really funny though. Immaculate game design. It was just tough guy. It was you tough guy. That is that is a matchup check against Bowser. That is a matchup check. Always know. I agree. You need to always know that you can't go for your uh you know your multi hitting jabs. If you have a jab finish, if you got a gentleman, always always always. Yeah, a lot of those situations for big kill, I feel like could have been solved if if they just you know knew their B and Bs, knew knew their knew their combo game better, knew their punish game better. It just it just seemed like they were. Lacking the matchup knowledge or Oof. ability to really capitalize where they could have, and that kind of made them easy pickings for Owser right there. So hopefully, oh, yeah. Big Kill comes back a little bigger, a little killer. But that's gonna be uh, that set right there, putting Seton Hall in the lead. Yep, and we'll see you guys in a couple of minutes yeah. as we wait for the next players to jump on in. So don't go anywhere quite yet.
Hello everybody, and we are back this time around. We got Jimbo 2000 going up against St. Peter's Five Points. So, not sure who Jimbo plays, but I do know Five Points is the violent. I'm gonna say Bowser. Ugh. Five points, gonna be probably playing Byleth. So we're gonna be seeing the second Byleth coming out of St. Peter's. The school of Byleths and Falcons versus Jimbo 2000. If it's another Bowser, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm going to start screaming. I'm gonna literally be Yo, shaking and crying. If I look like I'm laughing like an absolute mad woman, it is because I'm uh, She is a mad woman. No, it's it's because she's I'm absolutely in space. She's. I, I, Pudus who keeps telling us stuff. Uh, oh! That you guys can't hear. Oh my god! I've played this Lucas before in tournament. I'm not capping. I think I've literally played this Lucas at a Xeno. I've played, I have been inside the Gimbo 2000. I don't know where, I forgot where I played Gimbo. It might have been at Xeno, it might have been at another tournament, but it was online. So I am very familiar with this Lucas player, actually. Um. So we're going to be seeing lots of PK fire. We're going to be seeing lots of not approaching. There we go. The good stuff. The stuff that we're, we're much used to in, in safe Lucas play. Yeah, just a lot of keep away. Just got to make sure five points is never in that range where they can really do much. So with a lot of double jump cancels, there is a lot of retreating PK fires. But running head on to the neutral B. Technical director is... is Try my patience. <laughs> we're all losing our minds as we dwell into the later hours right here, but we're still out here for this action. Five points seeming to struggle a little bit, and you know, Violet does tend to struggle a little bit with smaller characters. You know, oh, Lucas does have. Those tail oh, see you later. By virtue of having a trampling projectile that doesn't even so Trample. much as send you into tumble. Yeah, because you can't interact with it, and it will continue to hit you through it. Wow, that is, I mean, a trampling and a transcendent projectile. That's tough. That's a recipe for disaster right there. Yep, it is the Tether Recovery Slay, so really like that Jumbo uh, 2000. Just went through that, just good matchup knowledge. Oh, yeah. All right, though, five points. Trying to get this finishing hit somehow. Uh, the arrow of Fail Not actually clanging with PK Fire there, so five points is definitely going to have to find some way to find the stock off. All right. Well, then sometimes, sometimes they sometimes they just serve it up for you. Sometimes they put it on a platter and they say, "Here, eat up." Double jump, early dodge to get back onto the platform. You know what? I don't mind it because I definitely would not have expected that as a landing option. I like the idea to attack chase thing, but so committal. And look at that out of shield punish from Jimbo. Wow, they are just doing all the Lucas things they need to. And if there's one thing I think five points should be doing in these scenarios, it's conserving their jump. If this is the second up B edge guard we've seen from Jimbo on five points, and five points has been exhausting their double jump every single time. It's important. Your recovery is your most precious resource. You want to make sure you can conserve it. Byleth, very generous up B to ledge. So definitely keep that second jump. You never know when you might need it. Oh my God. Yeah, what a spike, Jimbo. No delayed angles or anything, so five points knew the exact timing that they needed. Going ham on those down tilts, but not going to be getting anything else off of it. This is a really even game. Yeah, five points just kind of getting poked out here, not struggling to really find their way in, and not really finding consistent follow-ups on Jimbo. Both of them just like choosing to play it back just a little tiny, but gets the falling neutral, but not accounting for how much knockback it dealt and did not find a follow up uh, as Jimbo just teched to safety. All right, five points has Jimbo in a very bad position here and really hard commitment to that F smash gonna pan out. I feel like one thing five points could be doing is just trying to capture the airspace Jimbo is occupying a lot more often. Managing to make it back there, that was so scary. Mm -hmm. So far away, Jimbo did not get like any other hits of the up and They just needed a couple more pokes and that definitely would have been it. Goes to the PK Thunder again, and oh, not no. going to be finding it as that is such a slow, slow projectile Whoa. sometimes. That down smash almost connecting there with Jimbo, that could have killed too. Down smash is an exceptionally uh, powerful hitbox. That's a protect chase and just goes immediately 
for the F tilt. Jimbo gonna be closing it out. Hits uh, him with the Rasengan. <laughs> that was that was a really good game from Jimbo, honestly. Um, they played the first two socks really, really well. Yeah. Five points was making a bit of a comeback. They, you know, they played Lucas Byleth. This is how you play a matchup against the Tether recovery. Yeah, almost very scary after that first initial SD, but honestly, Jimbo was winning, you know, chipping out very nice. <laughs> Rasengan! <laughs> just killed him. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Our technical director is an insane person. Oh, man. Anyway, Jimbo gonna be taking that first game really nicely. Punishing that tech. A little bit of oopsie whoopsies on both sides that game, but <laughs> the zoom in. <laughs> zoom ins kill me every time. There are a lot of points where five points uh, were just expending their double jump and got them killed more often than not. Right, Dara? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta make sure you're holding on to your double jump, especially as a Tether recovery, because it, this is not even specific to PK Thunder. Um, even though it, like it is like most exemplified with this. Anytime somebody has the ability just to deny you or just to poke you very gently off stage, um, you need that double jump so that you can just get back on. Without it, you are as good as dead at it's any true. So as long as you get poked once, that's all it takes. We gotta be careful. Yeah. Keep your double jump. It is your best friend. It is your most precious resource if you are a character that has a good recovery. Unless you're Ness, then you have three jumps, and then it's cool. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, but this is recovery isn't all that. Stop. I don't want to hear that. Let's prop yeah, this again. This tea is delicious. What That's kind of it. tea? What flavor is it? I have some nice mint green tea. Nice. Mint is also very good for your stomach as well. It's, it's good. It's good. No, it's, it's good. Mint fine. is good. It, Mint is good fine, for your but... stomach. It cures nausea. And yes, the original five points main coming out. For those of Only you who don't know, five points fans would know this one. Well, I've, I've we've seen five points before. We've commentated five points before in previous seasons. I'm sorry, you don't remember. <sighs> I'm a five point stand. I was there when they were just one point. Anyway. What does that even mean? Lucas did two points, okay. <laughs> no, change it back to two points. <laughs> we got Jimbo, we got five points going up against each other in the ditto. Uh, this is going to be really, really interesting because I feel like this can be such an explosive matchup, especially when it comes to somebody being off stage, since there's so much recovery and edge going and makes it potential that you could go for. Like, what is that? I love watching this, watching Dittos also. Dittos are some of the most entertaining Smash Bros to watch because it's so funny to see a representative of a character fight another representative of a character and struggle against the same things every other character on this roster struggles with. And oh, wow, wow, from all the way down here, Lucas just having such a, an amazing recovery. So now my question is, how is five points going to be able to punish this? I like those early PK freezes because it forces the opponent to at least like pick uh, a recovery option. Oh my god. And this is like watching a true mirror. Like I feel like these two are very evenly matched right now. Excellent FTL coming out from Jimbo right there. And uh, leads are everything in the ditto, honestly. But sometimes we can't hold on to them. Getting a couple of down kills into a job. Five points, just, you know, able to get a bit of stage control, but not going to be lasting too long for themselves. We're just watching two scared boys fight each other. That is what, that is what this is. I don't, I don't, I don't know if uh, it was a brawl thing where they made Lucas, like, terrified at everything. Because if you, I mean, if, if you play ever played Subspace Emissary, he is, he is scared at everything. He's a, he's a coward. Um... I don't know how if they gave him a personality in Mother 3, because I have not played that game yet, because I'm a fraud as an S player. Ah, uh, you really need to play the game, but this Oh my <laughs> Technical Director said his personality <laughs> is the lack of a mom. <laughs> and that's about the most developing thing I could ever hear in my life. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm in shambles right now. I'm trying to talk about this game so hard, but you two are making it. You're making it so difficult, Booty Man. <laughs> oh! One dead guard right there by Jimbo. That's ridiculous. Oh, jeez. Was that your well, 40 impression? Out. I really like that dash back out of the up tilt because Jimbo was just able to get a reset catch. Five points mashing on the way back down. Is that going to be the back throw? Not quite yet. That's no nice back throw. Nope. Back there's still being a good win condition. It's just not there yet in terms of percent for Jim, uh, for five points just yet. This is looking tough. It just seems like Jimbo has been able to find uh, just more consistent hits, more PK fires, more more stray tilts or, or fares. Five points has to play a little bit more evasive, you know? It can be hard to punish your own character, though, especially when they're so small and floaty. This should be it right here, though. Should be it, and does indeed find the two flame, or not even the two flame, just because of how big that hitbox is. Finds it out, smash at the ledge, the classic. That thing is active. That thing is big. That thing's got a lot of hits to it. If you didn't know, Dara, 2,000 is more than five. It was just, it was just a mere numbers game you know at work here. I'm gonna mute my mic. You got it. You, you got this for the next like 20 seconds. You, you, you're gonna follow up off of that. What do I say, Sean? <laughs> what, what do I say to 2,000 is more than you're five? You gonna tell me I'm wrong? Jimbo has now blown open a much wider lead right here for Seton Hall over St. Peter's. And now it's up to St. Peter's to really kind of claw it back. They are down two sets now at this point. Got to make up a lot of ground here. If they lose one more, that'll be it. Are you going to cry? No. Are you going to start crying? This is a little baby. You're going to start sobbing. You shaking or crying right now? Anyway. Cut to a break. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. You guys too. We'll see you guys <laughs> in a little bit. <laughs>
Hello, my little pod champs. Welcome back to Seton Hall, going up against St. Peter's University. We got Elementor. <laughs> going up against uh, Bright and Early. Sean, how you feeling about the sad dog? Feeling good. Do Wait, do I have a... <laughs> Oh, Devin. We gotta talk about this. <laughs> so we've seen uh, Bright and Early. some more whipped cream today. <laughs> but we do have... Please. This is pretty much St. Peter's last chance to get themselves back in the cut because they are down two sets to one now. They drop one more. Mathematically, it's not looking good for them. Bright and early, I believe, going to be playing Roy. Elementor, it sounds like a villain. So I don't know don't know what character they're playing. Well, I'm able to tell you either. It's not on our team notes, so it's going to be a surprise. For another day, like and surprises. that day is already here today. Oh We're my! Be seeing bright and early, the going, of course, going up against Go. Elementor, the King K. Roll. Not really what I would have expected, but you know what? It is a villain. He is. A, he is. King K. Roll is a villain. He's an evil pirate. You can tell by the pirate hat he wears. It's a crowd. Oh, I no! Guess, I he guess takes when he does blunderbuss. He puts on a yeah, pirate yeah, yeah. hat. I love, oh, I love that, that was so good. One move he only loses it. And Bright and Ugly somehow not actually able to snap onto the ledge. That. A little bit too far out. What an unfortunate way to begin that game. An unfortunate indeed is Bright and Early is just getting edge guarded super hard right now by Elementor. And this is a huge lead already. Belly armor. Oh. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that other than that was tragic. I feel like the Roy combo game on K. Rule should be massive. We should be seeing massive damage off of any, every interaction, but it's if Bright or Early knows how to keep capitalizing on that damage, you know, if they can react accordingly. Because Roy does have a lot of really good true combos in this game. Uh, they just differ per character or depending on the positioning or what hit you get initially. K. Rule is really a vibe check for you. Right now, Brad and Early going with a beefy upbeat over the ledge. I love that decision because it was able to set up into that side of B. Goes for it all with the F smash, but somehow the grab actually not connecting. Wow. And K Rules has one of the more visual indicators when a counter is not active because he gets all sad when he, his counter doesn't work. And that, that is your opportunity to really hit him in that instance. Mm -hmm. But already a really huge lead for Elemental right now, going through the down throw into the neutral B. What? Neutral B. Typically, it's going to be like combo. a dash attack. Well, why? Real combo if you get hit by it. <laughs> Alright, though, Bright and Early trying to get something started up here. Just needs this kill. They needs to catch one of these landings on Elementor. They seem to be circumventing the ledge game. Wow. And yes, that is going to be a stock out right there. <laughs> Typically... Like, you don't see, like, uh, King Kegel's side B actually get broken by anything, so it's the first time in a long time that you saw that actually happen. Roy is, Roy is really strong hitboxes. Like, the, str the strong hits of all of his moves do a ton of knockback. You have to be really careful. They will break a lot of multipliers in this game that don't tend to shudder. It's why Roy is so good against mm -hmm. characters like Yoshi, for example. Because uh, you know, Roy's moves both through the Yoshi double jump armor. Oh, that new chill might have been able to do it, but right now, putting on all that shield pressure at the ledge, I can't believe that Elementary was able to get another oh grab, but committing so far off stage with the fastball fail. Mm. Mm. This game is still kind of even, though. Roy, I've seen Roy kill at some crazy percents, especially on heavies, so Roy's dead. Like, if, if, if placed in the right circumstances, this could be pretty huge for Brighton early right here. Oh what goodness. on earth? The second hit hitting Elemental after the end lag of that belly armor. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Oh my. What a hit coming out from Elementor right there. Things are looking scary right now for St. Peter's. Pretty much one game off, kind of losing this entire series right here. So, Brian Early has to make sure they find the, these kills. And have jumped right into that back air right there, tried to drift forward. Usually what you, what uh, I've been told by Cola himself, the man, the myth, the legend, that the best thing to do when you think your opponent is gonna jump as Roy is come in with a forwarder. So if you think your opponent's gonna jump forward air, really good low committal way to, to get some good damage off while calling out that jump. So although... <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> 
Um, I really like how Elementica treated this matchup, but only like one thing. They need to be a little bit more like, you know, on the toes, like with some of the out of shield options, because they kept on opting to go for like immediate grabs out of shield instead of any dash grabs or instead of any tilts or any jabs or any neutralize out of shield. Um, and as a result, they dropped some really like big punishes. Like when Roy F smashed that shield and they just went food grab instead of anything else. True. You got a dash grab. You got to release your shield and go through the dash grab sometimes. And uh, there are some good dash grabs, you know. And I don't know about Roy's dash grab. I know K Roll's dash grab is K fantastic. K Roll's dash grab is huge. It's that massive. Thing is massive. He's got yeah. those big croc hands to grab you with. Uh, so good first game for Elementor right there. Only one more to really seal it out for this crew battle right here. St. Peter's got to make something happen. Got to put something on the board here. Mm hmm. Uh, it's gonna be tough though, honestly, from what it, from what it's looking like right now. Yeah, 12 to 40, so at this point they just need to win a single game because otherwise this is looking like an unattainable lead for St. Peter's University. Um, yeah, Elementary played it really, really well. Um, we did see like some signs of life from bright and early towards the end, right? Like starting with like some of those um, falling neutralers into jabs. I do feel like they could push the advantage state a little bit further um, as well. And it could, it could, you know, it, it could, could go further. A lot yeah. more damage, yeah. With Roy, Roy is good for the explicit reason that he is so fast. He can push his advantage really far. He has a lot of win conditions. He can kill super early. Mm -hmm. You just need to know how to push him in all those metrics. For sure. So we are currently waiting on the bands, um, waiting on Still? them to select their stages. Uh, turns out we do know our bands. Uh, Battlefield, Yoshi's in town, so okay. Yoshi's is going to be an instant ban against Roy. You never, ever want to take him to that stage. Really? So. Good choice. Yeah! Side B kills you so early. His platform extensions, his movement, his jumpings. They are pretty good. They are pretty good. The town and city is like the fundamental stage that you ban against Roy. True. That is like the... You gotta do it. You die really early off the side against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're waiting to see on the stage counter pick again in the meantime. If you've been enjoying the stream, make sure you drop a follow to EGF. They do a lot for the collegiate scene. Tyler has built this entire thing with his bare hands from the ground up. Viking, if you know if you know him. Invented twitch.tv even. Coded the whole thing himself. I don't think Did that happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Mark Zuckerberg. No, Steve Jobs, sorry. If you are enjoying the laughs, the giggles, the goofs that we are having, you can follow Duramgar at Duramgaria on Twitter. She's very cringe, but she's pretty funny sometimes. Uh, she's also got a Twitch, twitch.tv slash Duramgaria, where she streams sometimes as well. Uh, you can follow me at FAN9S on Twitter if you want to yell at me or say nice things to me or look at pictures of my dog. You can also uh, find me on Twitch at Fan9S2. I stream maybe. And I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fangplays, where I upload videos about Super okay. Smash Brothers Ultimate for the Nintendo Three, Switch. Two, Game two. <laughs> Between these two, they're gonna be optic to go for Smashville, so I understand the choice. You know, you wanna go somewhere really, really small, but honestly, King K. Rool controlling sending stage on Smashville is so scary because he can cover dash attack and dash grab the rest of the stage in that direction. So this this stage is gonna be like super hot and cold. Oh yeah. Blunderbuss, I mean, K, K. Rool's definitely gonna do well on this stage. He's pretty big, less space for him to traverse. Uh, Crown and Blunderbuss are gonna be really good just by metric of how much they cover the stage. I, what? That was such a good down tilt. Oh my God. Yeah, just about anything can take the stock right now is not going to be able to do it, but not yet, but it is going to set up into a nasty ledge trap right about now. Elementary maybe trying to fish out a double jump and neutral it, actually sending behind Roy. I want to also mention that they decided to buff K. Rule again for some reason. They just keep doing it. I don't know why. He they want him to be good so bad. Oh, I really like the idea from Elementary. I think they want to go for like another neutral B um, as they're landing to maybe try and get the command grab on bright and early. But either way, they have so much momentum. They're just playing so well. Everything that they're going for is connecting. Um, seems like bright and early doesn't really know what the ends are. Yeah, bright and early is kind of struggling to navigate through these projectiles quite a bit. 
Um, just kind of not really finding their way in. And if there's one thing Roy does really well, it's find his way in. He's got such good airspeed. His double jump is incredible. Uh, it's all about just controlling that beast and, and really making your movement good. Because again, like look at look at how easy uh, Brian really was able to jump over. Uh, that crown right there. You could have just grabbed. You can grab K. Rule out of his crown animation if you if you get there fast enough. He can't really shield or do anything else in time. He does not have that luxury in frame data. And Elemental almost had it once again with these jump leads, but maybe they want to go for like some safely falling aerials back onto the stage. Right and ugly. I like the idea to counter them, but I believe even if they did initiate it, uh, King K. Rule would be able to just snap on. Oh my god, that was a sweet spot. That was it. Oh my god, this is massive damage coming out too. From Elementor. It does not stop. Oh, I like the parry attempt right there. I thought there was going to be like one final big hit. But mm -hmm. No dice right there for Elementor. The down angled uh, side B was definitely a bit of <laughs> but you know what? Either way, that's all that it's going to take. Lovely F tilt and. Jeez. That's it. That was an F smash. Oh, that's an F smash? Yeah. It was a big F smash. Where does he, where, where does he keep that boxing glove? Wherever he keeps his pilot hat. Under his, his belly, dog. perhaps? Who knows? It is it is belly argument, so I'd imagine it's like there's like a nice little there's pocket something. Space. There's like a compartment in there or some such. Either way. Really, really well played for Elementor. That's gonna pretty much seal this series for Seton Hall right now as they go up 16 to 4. Mm -hmm. There is no hope, mathematically, actually, for St. Peter's to be making this back. But we are gonna be seeing one more set. Uh, between whoever they decide to send in. Uh, it hasn't really been decided too hard just yet. But yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot of what Brian Early was struggling with uh, was just getting in, fighting through these projectiles, and just maximizing Roy Punish game. And that just comes with time and more experience. Roy, not the easiest character to really maximize. He's definitely very easy conceptually, but not very easy to really push all of his potential out of him immediately. I would say. The game moves. With that being said, we are going into the final set of the night between these two schools. We got a couple of other schools afterwards. We already know that Seton Hall is going to be the victors because you can only earn a maximum of eight points. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, so stay tuned.
Hello, my little pot chimps. Welcome back. Here is the final set for this evening between these two schools. We got Seton Hall going up against St. Peter's University. We got Trey, the one and the only. The, the one. persons whose switch we've been playing on this whole time going up against everybody's favorite, Cuffy. The, the Cuffster. Box DDD player. Young Cuffers. Big Cuffy fans in chat over here, as Cuffy is also a native Tri State member. But mm -hmm. we will see how Cuffy fares against Trey. Rosalina versus DDD. I cannot think of a good matchup that I've seen Cuffy play this entire season. I'm gonna keep it a stack with you. I can't think of a good matchup for DDD, period. Uh, well, I can, but there's just like not a lot of them. All right, game one. There's gotta be one. There's gotta be tough. one character that DDD is better than. This is hard. And you can't get again. like too, you know, heavy handed with your Gordo usage because Rosalina always has access to downbeat. She can, like, yeah, she just puts it away. Am I wrong or have we not seen Cuffy fight another Rosalina before? I'm, I'm fairly certain somewhere in the deep concavities of my mind that we have seen Cuffy fight Rosalina before. I just can't remember who, but it was someone in this league. And it's boggling my mind right now. But the biggest thing is, if in those mid ranges you can actually bait out down B and then use that as a way to be able to approach, that's going to be such a good way to get in because anytime you have a reflection or an absorption, you can always use it against your opponent if you know what you're doing. Hey, you got it. And uh, not looking too good for Trey so far. Cuffy doing a good job of just using the additional range that DDD has with his sword uh, to really just keep Trey away. And the Luma. Luma's also not being wow. summoned back. I feel like dragging Luma back and getting to ledge was uh, was Trey's biggest priority there, but instead wanted to use uh, the gravity pull on um, that Gordo right there. And that left him wide open. Gravity pull actually does leave Rosa pretty susceptible. Mm -hmm. Oh, bye, Luma. That's really funny, by the way, because Luma does like to come with temporary projection. You can inhale Luma. Huh. All right, though, Cuffy, not, you know, looks like Trey's just having problems getting through Gordo right now. Not really respecting it entirely, and that's leading to Luma getting smacked around quite a bit. And Rosa's not the character, really not a character that kills the earliest, I feel like. Especially against a character as heavy as King DDD. Yeah, kill power is definitely something you that can struggle with, so you're looking for up smashes and up airs and down airs, and oh. no punish on the dash attack on your shield. That should be an F smash. That should be truly anything. So that's a bit of a misplay. Ugh. I like the edge guard attempt from Cuffy right there because Rosa is pretty susceptible. Mm -hmm. You know, DDD's big. You can really put out a giant hitbox to really catch her on the up and up. She doesn't have a hitbox there. Man, that re-hit rate is nuts. Oh, bonk. We're looking at Cuffy's, we're, we're in Cuffy's world right now. Yep, Cuffy has just been in control of the pace the whole time. Tries to go for the Gordo, <gasps> the Gordo. <gasps> that could have been the spike, but Cuffy backing out last moment saying, you know what, maybe not today. It's so unfortunate because I feel like Cuffy should have gone in earlier in this crew battle. I feel like Cuffy, if there was any player that wasn't going to be able to tie it up that had the X Factor, it was going to be Cuffy. Yeah. You see it, the restock coming out game one. Unfortunately, the max that uh, Cuffy can earn for St. Peter's is eight points. However, uh, looking good so far. That could, that'll really close uh, close the gap and get some points on the on the board for St. Peter's. Coffee just wild. played this one. Really, was that a shield poke? Oh that my was, yeah, goodness! Yeah, that was a shield let's poke. Get a, let's get let's get let's get a slow down on that. Definitely one. a shield poke. I, I would I would bet my biscuits on it. That move does an insane amount of shield damage. Bum, 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 and shield Wow. Pump. That move does a lot of shield damage. It's got a lot of consecutive multi-hits. Each hit is very, very strong. Did he hit hard? He hit big, strong, good. Boop. God damn. That was crazy by Coffee. That was nuts. That was unbelievable. But going into this game, too, I want to see Trey just start using moves that'll knock Gordo back. You know, I feel like that's the main inhibitor right now for Trey is finding their way through these Gordos. I feel like Rosa Nair is good at knocking it back, just given how all-encompassing it is. Uh, it's probably the... You want to use your 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 most generous hitbox when dealing with Gordo to really yep. get it to hit it back at DDD. You need, you need something just generous and disjointed enough yeah. is the biggest thing, because... The way that Gordo works is that the actual hitboxes on the spikes of Gordo, they are transcendent. 
okay? And the only thing that you can actually interact with is the body, okay, of the Gordo itself. That is why it is so susceptible and prone to trading with a lot of different attacks, because by the time your hitbox is inside of that Gordo, that spike is also similarly inside of whatever limb that you have decided to extend. So you gotta make sure that like as Rosalina and Luma, you gotta really think about, okay, what can I do to knock this back? Honestly, using the horizontal hitbox of down it, horizontal hitbox of up it, and maybe a back hit are gonna be your best bets. Neutral and forward, maybe not so much. Uh, neutral having a little bit smaller of a hitbox, forward maybe being a little bit too precise, and uh, the multi hits might be too weak sometimes. And that is your Gordo report from our patented DDD expert, Duramcar. The D actually stands for DDD in Duramcar. No one really knew, knows this. I. Either way, where are we going? Not even I. Not even I knew that. So where are we going? Me with that. Where are we going, Dara? Do we know where we're we going? going? Let me tell you where we're going. This Check could in be the potentially... SSU Captain's channel. Cuffy, gonna go with the bands to FD Kells and Lilap. They're gonna go to Battlefield. Honestly, good stage for Rosa. Keep your yeah. head nice and safe under those platforms. Up Smash is gonna be your best friend. Uh, DDD can definitely feel a little tiny bit suffocated on that stage. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh. Who is okay. another bad match for DDD? Falco. I like this pick. I like this counter pick. I, you know, where Rosa is really light in struggles, Falco has more than enough multi hits, uh, reflector, laser. Anything can really knock Gordo back, honestly. Gordo, how much HP does Gordo have? I forgot. I wouldn't be able to tell you off the wow. top of my head either. Um, but yeah, no, this is gonna be so difficult, especially with just how much of a combo character Falco is. Almost getting the reset on the platform, Cuffy needs to cut this bleeding ASAP. If there's one character that can capitalize on linear recoveries, though, it's it's DDD. This character, dash attack is so good. F-tilt's really good for calling out side Bs that are a little bit too above the ledge. That was an oh. insane recovery from Trey. And a really smart one, too. They were able to get back on time, but maybe not fast enough. Using up the double jump as a safe way to be able to land. Right now, Cuffy just gonna be looking for that Gordo, but maybe a little bit too exploitable in that range. They need to be on the oh, lookout. Yeah. Hmm. All right, good first stock from Trey. Not, not gonna hit this the stage uh, for Cuffy, unfortunately, there. But Cuffy now kind of struggling a little bit. You have a character that has a lot more superior zoning tools to DDD, has good combo game, very consistent finishers on a lot of stuff. How is Cuffy really gonna find themselves out of this one? They're gonna be struggling for a little bit, that's what. They just need to be able to find this kill in any way that they can. This is where Falco is most exploitable, this is where DDD excels, but Cuffy just over committing to that dash attack instead of like setting up a traditional DDD ledge trap. No oh, yeah. Gordos, no down smashes, just dash attack. Wow, Nair not being tough enough right there to really finish off Trey. Trey gonna be going for an under the stage recovery, I like it. I like it. I like it too. Jumps right into the Gordo. No double jump off stage. They're gonna go to the ledge and getting punished on the side B. Excellent edge guard from Cuffy, evening up those dots. Oh yeah. Okay, tried to get the follow-up with side B right there. I'm liking the creativity from Trey. We're seeing a lot more expressiveness than we were seeing with that Rosalina game beforehand. <laughs> Both the front and back hit of uh, get up attack, knocking that Gordo right back into Cuffy. Cuffy is relying on Gordo so, oh. so much, and honestly, it's working because Trey keeps on opting um, to go for a lot of preemptive options. Beautiful grab, catching the goal from the ledge. Uh, Falco turret box was still inside of DDD uh, when he was rolling through, so even though it would have crossed up afterwards, he was still vulnerable uh, in that time. Well, Cuffy going for the dash attack just a little bit too early there. You want to make sure you're only going for that dash attack when you know you're going to be able to hit it on a slower recovery that takes more setup, like Falco up B, for example. Not really, not really side B. Side B, you're not really going to be getting a lot of dash attacks off of that. Mm -hmm. Goes for the neutral, tries to go for the extension with the falling up here. I really, really like the idea, but then just slightly dropping the execution for it. Oh my. Okay. Thought we were going to see some some cheeky action right there from Cuffy. Yeah, a lot of people love Buffer and Yuri Dodge in that position, so it's a bit of a vibe check. Uh, that entire oh, yeah. situation, Cuffy almost getting the track down, but DDD is too slow to actually get there in time. And Cuffy still has a lot of percent to work with. 60 is pretty early still for King DDD in terms of uh, getting killed. I feel like this is, this is Cuffy's been finding their momentum a little bit more and catching these landings on Trey a lot more consistently now. 
I love that goalie to just keeping themselves <gasps> safe. But then just ended up neutral, get up and go That was the worst that option. Charge F smash. I think that was get up attack. Was it? Let's go see. I think, I think that was get up attack that got coffee hit right there. Actually. A little too slow and not enough range on that get up attack to deal with the real back that Falco does in that scenario. Oh, just Damn. a little, just a toe too short. Yeah, you want to do get up attack. Pixels. Let's zoom in. Yeah, was, that's pretty sizable that? distance, honestly. Had Falco not been F smashing, it would have connected though. Uh, maybe. Because Falco reels almost all F smashes, yes. um, people like move back a little bit. Mm hmm. This is true. Which is why it's not really good to do get up attack unless there's a very obvious attack option right over the ledge or right in your face. Yeah. Uh, but Trey managing to claw that one back, you know, looked a little scary in certain instances, but managed spooky. to take the stock off of Cuffy really, really well. Yeah. So going into game number three, I mean, I feel like both of them just played it really, really well. Um, just the only thing is Cuffy needs to be a little bit more prone to calling out those jumps and not losing those stocks so early to all those stage spikes. We are going right into this game three. No character swaps from here on out. I think Trey found the character they wanted in the set right here. And the Switch just seems to be working out really, really well. Taking it to PS2, which I, I definitely agree with for Cuffy. Cuffy just tracking Trey all the way down. I like the idea to go for the F to go instead of like down to go. So just setting up attack chase instead of uh, opting for the damage. Really good choice. Oh boy. Cuffy finding themselves already in a little bit of a hard spot, but managing to sneak by with that Nair, and now it's Trey who's, who's struggling wow. here. Wow. Oh my god. That was scary. Such a dangerous position, but then just oh, ended that up was over so extending. Oh. What happened? What just happened? Cuffy couldn't make it back for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if they had enough jumps. Maybe he had more jumps or just maybe grossly miscalculated uh, how high that up was going to carry them. Either way, Good trade right there. IMO for Cuffy, since they were the one game two losing a lot of their stocks uh, first. Mm -hmm. And I feel like trade just exemplified how useful Lazy can be, because in a lot of ways, um, it is a little bit less committal than Shine to try and reflect those Gordos and, and just to not come back at DDD. So it should be it should be a much more implemented tool in this matchup. Ooh, okay, Trey not really being able to get anything huge, but. Uh, hits are hits, you know, the more hits you're getting on King Dedede, the higher he's going to climb, and the, the more opportunity you're going to have to edgeguard him successfully, or, or at least get that strong last hit, which I'm thinking is going to be a back air smash attack, since that's how Trey's been finishing off most oh, of these no. stocks. But the missed DI on the up air, you got to treat it just like you would have gone up here, basically. Wow. Is that how you actually DI it? No, but I like to say that it is. No, that's, that's just information that you can't you look, do that. You look at what side of the hammer that you're on that you're getting hit by. by and the that's where you're going to go. And yeah. then you hold out. Uh, Such a crazy hitbox. I DI it wrong every time, too. Do not worry, chat. I got hit. And there it is. Those downings again and again, but Cuffy really smart to release the up at the perfect moment. Still with enough aerial drift to be able to make it back oh on. Oh, my God. Oh, oh buddy. Now Trey struggling to find this last hit. You really don't want to do a defensive option in front of Slow Gordo just because it's there purposely to set up for grabs or punish spot dodges like that since the arc it shoots in is very, very small. Oh God. Wow, that doesn't do a lot of shield damage. I was expecting that to like break shield. So was I at that point, but that Gordo is going to be able to seal it out. Cuffy winning the set, winning the battle, but not the boy. Uh, Seton Hall is still going to be your victor's for tonight, but at least Cuffy was able to get a couple of points on the board. That is true. And uh, that is going to be the entire series right there. Really well played by Cuffy. You know, struggled a little bit that second game, but game three looking good. So I am curious to see who, if if any, I cannot believe that Uppy also didn't hit. That was insane. Um, curious to see who we're going to be getting for an interview, if anybody. I know we're a little bit behind schedule right now. But here we go. Bad gamers, with that being said, that is going to conclude Seton Hall going up against uh, St. Peter's University. We're going to quickly see if we have enough time or if we will be conducting an interview at all. Uh, we will see you guys in just a couple of minutes regardless, so don't go anywhere quite yet.
Hello everybody, and we are back this time around. We have my little pog champ, Trey, representing Seton Hall University. How are you doing today, my friend? Doing all right, how about the two of you? Doing good, thanks for asking. Yeah, uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate you guys on the W. Seriously, Thank you guys you. played super well today. St. Peter's is no easy school to take down. They've got some really good players on their side, but you guys crushed them. You guys kind of crushed them. <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's our heavy players for you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> for real, you guys have a lot of heavies. <laughs> we, a little too many. But. A little too many. <laughs> I agree. Just in general, there are too many heavy players, period. I'm not, not just a <laughs> reference to you guys, but I got a question for you. So I was looking I was looking at chat, uh, like when the Jimbo and Five Point set was happening. What's the history between those two? Uh, Jimbo's right here, but also um, they... You went to high school together? Yeah. Yeah, him and uh, Five Point went to high school together. Oh, so from wow, the start of really? GFC, That's wild. They were, like, hyping up the set. And y'all nice. played the same characters, too. That's really funny. Yep. Does Jimbo know that we've played in tournament before also? Me and Jimbo have played in tournament before. Did you know you played in tournament before? What? You played in tournament with one of the commentators. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I guess he doesn't remember, but... That's, it was like a <laughs> Wi-Fi set like forever ago. I just thought oh. it was funny. Um, but yeah, no, I like I saw I saw like five points in the set, like switch back to Lucas and I was like, ah, we haven't seen that. So it's maybe like done um, for the culture. So just want to ask like, you know, what do you feel like is the, your biggest challenge, like as a team, um, as the season is progressing, and what are you doing to like really overcome it? Uh, I guess as a team, just figuring out. A lot of us are going through character crises right now. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm switching from like Falco, Fox, Rosa. Uh, mm -hmm. Blobman's going through the whole roster, presumably. So I guess that figuring out our mains and then fixing our execution for the most part, because a lot of the time we end up flailing around. But is it more of a comfort thing for the character crisis? Like, are you guys trying to f like what do you what quite like what questions are you trying to answer with your character crisis? Crisis. I guess just what play style each of us have, and then how can we reach a point of consistency where we're not like flailing or getting nervous during matches? I guess. Hey, you, you, also, you guys don't have to main one character. Also, you can have two characters that supplement each other matchup as well. Like I don't, I, in, in, in my opinion, I don't think any character in this game is 100% solo viable. You can get far with them, and you can even win tournaments with them, provided the right bracket. But you don't necessarily have to pigeonhole yourself just playing one character. Oh God, he's being deleted by the Matrix. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Um, but yeah, so I have a question. So what has your team like recently been doing that you feel like um, has really been helping you guys improve? What has been really like sort of pushing you guys up and up lately? Uh, well, for here, we have tournaments every Friday that every mm -hmm. most of the people on our team go to. And then during the week, we have practices where we come, we lab, we play best nice. of three sets with the EGFC rule set. So I think doing that helped us gain more familiarity with what stages our characters are good on, just general matchup mm -hmm. stuff. Nice, that's maybe the first time that I've heard like somebody's like actually like actively emulating yeah. the tournament setting um, and like what you guys are playing in, so that's really I'm cool. noticing that though, Dara, is that a lot of these schools that have been winning these weeks have had like weeklies. Like they have weekly tournaments mm -hmm. and they all say the same thing where they play with each other and constantly grow. And I think that's a huge edge for you guys. I feel like that's what's gonna keep you guys growing because you guys are competing with each other. You wanna be better than each other consistently. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, with that being Grinding. said, I uh, <laughs> wanted to say, Trey, thank you so much uh, for being here. You guys did a phenomenal job this week. You guys killed it. Um, we will now be bidding our farewell to you. So uh, thank you for stopping by. And it was really, really uh, great being able to talk to you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. Hey, take care, you guys. Too, friend. And with that being said, we will be transitioning into the final two schools for the evening. We got DePaul going up against Manhattan College. We got some exciting sets ahead of us. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere quite yet. <laughs>